Hi, I'm David Morrison, President of Talus Technologies. In this video, we're going to take a look at the SegWise scan function in Exploration Archives. The SegWise scan function handles pre-stack and post-stack data and serves a number of useful purposes. Firstly, it allows users to QC and verify the coverage of the incoming data. Secondly, it creates images such as a live trace outline, amplitude map, time sections, and so on. And these can be used to view the data even when the data is offline or unavailable. And finally, the tools can be used to verify compliance of the data to your organization's standards. So now, let's take a look at how the SegWise scan function actually works. I'm going to open the seismic window, go to a known survey using a bookmark, select the survey, add it to my list, and now I can see all of the available products for that survey. Most of these products are hyperlinked, and anything that's hyperlinked can be open. So let's take one of our uh, process stacks, double click on the hyperlink, and that will open the file in the default browser. In this particular case, I'm using size C for stack data, but it could be any viewing application for SegWise data. If the file has been through the SegWise scan process, we have some additional tools that we can use to visualize the data. Using the default template, the scan was able to extract scalar values, min and max amplitude, CDP X and Y locations, inline and crossline, sample rate, and so on. We also created a live trace outline, time slices, one of five at different intervals, time sections, and the report of the values we found within the SegWi volume. And finally, we extract the EBCDIC header and store that in the database. Now, regardless of whether this file is online or not, all of these values can be viewed for a SegWi volume. So now, let's go and see how the SegWi scan function is used to generate these images and extract this metadata. I've prepared a catalog session. Let's add our file. I've defaulted a gather file of, in this particular case, 146 uh, gigs. Not a particularly large file, but suitable for our demonstration. And you can see it's named the file and now has not um, given it a scan status. So let's go ahead and pull up our SegWi scan. I'm going to use a default for gathers that I know is going to work on this data. I'm going to add this file to the queue. Once in the queue, you can see that the file is ready for scanning. It's using the default templates for both the trace and the EBCDIC data. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the scan. Once the scan is started, it will start to calculate an estimated time. Now, because the scan process runs outside of the application, you can queue many files and in fact, close the application and it will continue to do the scan on those files. So I'll come back to you when the scan is finished. All right, now that the scan has been completed, we'll go and take a look at what the results are. So now the scan status is scanned and we'll open up our snapshot. And you can see that it's determined that this is a CDP gather. It's extracted the scalar values, sample rate, calculated the spacing, and so on. It's generated a live trace outline, four time sections. It's put all the information that extracted into a report that can be displayed or output and it's extracted the EBCDIC header and stored that in the database for interrogation. So this is pre-stack data, and it works exactly the same as post-stack data. And now that these images are stored in the database, they can be examined at any time, even if the file itself isn't online. As we have shown, the SegWi scan function handles both pre-stack and post-stack data. It can be used to create images that can help a user visualize the data even if that data isn't online. And the tools can be used to verify that the data meets your organization's standards either automatically or during the catalog session. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, contact Talis at www.explorationarchives.com. Thank you.